think there was two of them, maybe no giant, something else. But they were out of the other one. Desiree, took it Those of you who aren't buying, welcome. We've got a class right here as well. So if you have any questions or any comments, just send me or you can type it in chat. Yeah. 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 So I see um Ken, you're you're with us again. We're just gonna go ahead and refresh everything that we had done earlier in this week. So you know, you're welcome to stay and and refresh, like all of us, we're, we're still refreshed. All right. Okay. So, like I said, I brought this. Let me go ahead and pass this down. And these are, this is the one that I'm taking our, if I can see, if you can see it, taking our Muskogee words from. So if you can see that, this is the, the dictionary. I'm using not the green dictionary. And I'm passing that around so all the people can see it. And like I was saying in the uh, class on Monday and Wednesday, if you guys need one of these, this is uh, Ann Townsend. She has, has some, and I've been bringing some for you guys. But online, I know I showed you Monday, but this is what it is. And this is the uh, the hymns that are in there. So if you request from Miss Townsend, I think they can send it to you free of charge. If not, we, uh, the Muskogee Language Program. Would probably send it out to you. And I'm just showing everybody in class today some of the things that are available not only in the Muscogee Language Program, but with uh, with our like our youth center. You've got Uno cards, so Uno cards that are in Muscogee, like Humgen, you know, Humgen, Pokolin, Pichinin. So you've got these in Muscovy. I think they're $20, $25. So if you guys want some of these things, then um, you can um, get it. You can pay for it, and then I'll help it, go and pick it up for you guys. Great hands. I'm back and forth. But these are just some of the things that they have available for us to learn. And, you know, like my daughter loves to play a lot of, a lot of games. And it, it's really fun when you playing and learning at the same time. You know, and sometimes a lot of times you don't realize you're learning. All right, let's see. And I do have Baby Nota, the book going around. That's also from um, the uh, Youth Center. And it is the uh, story of the song that was on the Trail of Tears. And um, they were talking about the soldiers when they would shoot or the bugles. The, uh, the women would sing this song to help calm the babies uh, during the uh, show. All right, so we got that going. Let's go ahead and sing our song. And then you guys, the bosses are back there. Let's sing first. <laughs> so I don't catch you in the middle of something. All right. <laughs> So you don't feel the fullness of it so much. But 
you know, you can feel it just reverberate through through this room and you can just feel the strength of the words. So that always makes me feel good. And I know that it's our mind and our mouth ready to speak Muscogee and to, to think Muscogee. All right. So like I said, the boxes are in the back. You guys are welcome to that. And I will keep teaching. And again, yeah. online, for those of you who did not see the book that I was holding up, these are the songs in this book that um, are available to you. And that, when you sing these songs, when you sing these songs, it, um, you sing these songs, it uh, helps you to speak and show you. Woo, can you give me some <laughs> my, my, my voice is going out. <laughs> All right, so this is just the front of the book looks like for those of you online. So I've been passing this around for those who are in here. And it helps you to uh, to learn and to speak and to sing when you, when you see the words that, hurt, that helps you to write your feet in. And this is in the book. And you can see right here that hand counts in Edwards Tribal Liaison. That's the office you get in. And here is her contact information, so I will leave it up for a second so that I can write that thing. Did you get one of these? Um, I have one. You can have one. Okay. All right. Okay, and I was told it's also on the website for contact information and information. Yeah, probably yeah, uh, the Skokie Nation. But, um, yeah, so. She's the uh, Adam Handle. She's the uh, Edward at MuskogeeNation.com. That's her email. And her, her phone number, her office is Everybody has the Muscogee language resource pack. I know I had it left at the very beginning. These are available from the Muscogee Nation, and they will send it out to you for free. Okay. 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 In the resource packet, this is a packet that the uh, Muscogee Nation language department puts together. And it's got bookmarks. It's got some um, um, coloring um, things for like the numbers for just starting out. It's really helpful. They also have, um, like I said, the two and three letter sounds that we're trying to capture. So this is a, a good thing for you to um, start with. For those of you who are just beginning, and like I said, just call up the Muscogee Language Program and they will be able to send this out to you for your start. Do you want to get one of them? This one? Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Okay. So we'll try that all out of the way. Like I said, we're first everything that we've done. And one of the things that I know, so those of you who have a Google link, this is out there. But um, the College of Muscogee Nations I went to school there and they work with the uh, Muscogee um, language program. This is one of the things I wanted to show you guys. Come on. I know it's something that wants to work this one There we go. All right, so on this screen, remember I was telling you sometimes the R has a, the flea or the thee sound? This is one of the examples I was showing everybody is uh, he has the, he has more of the flea sense, like half flea. So when he's speaking. Wisdom, hobotlinga. Wisdom, hobotlinga. Wisdom, hobotlinga. So you see it's got the flea sound. So that's how I learned like Hadamji Chompleys. That's why when I began, I started saying Hadamji Chompleys. But at the, uh, Language program, um, Mahaya Barnett says, Adam to jump this. So, either way is right. So, you heard that you can flee uh, when he talks, talks about wisdom, Hobo Klinga. You can also say Hobo Either way is good. But, like I said, I wanted to show you just 
some differences, but they're not wrong. They're just regional or different dialects. Respect, Atlaquichka. Respect, Atlaquichka. Respect, Atlaquichka. That one is not so much the flea, but Atlaquichka. So. I, like I said, these are some of the things that, you know, you come across, even when I was going to college and learning the uh, language, these are some of the things that would kind of club me up. And like, wait, isn't it supposed to be said this way and it was that way? And what I've learned, and what I've been teaching everybody, is there's more than one way to do it. There's more than one way, um, just like English. British English, you know, they spell tired, T-Y-R-E instead of T-I-R-E. So... You know, you go over there and they're going to tell us that we spelled it wrong. <laughs> and then, you know, when we went over there, we're like, well, that's kind of wrong. But now either way is right. You know what each other's talking about. It's just like the Southern English. You've got the twang there. It's still English. Go up north. The Massachusetts. Still English. It just sounds different. Y'all. Y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm from Oklahoma. I was born here. And how many years did I try not to have that twang? So all through my military career, I was trying not to get that twang. Come back to Oklahoma and work over there and be telling me, I'm twanging it up. <laughs> we did a twang and I'll just start going on. And, and even when he worked, uh, we were in, in San Antonio. Um, he was talking and they're like, oh, you don't have an accent. He's from New York. And, and he's like, oh, well, thank you. Well, y'all have a good day. And there it came out. That's why I do it. Like I said, it, you know, it's not wrong. It's just um, you hear the, the, uh, the R's sound different. Learning at the College of the Muscogee Nation. Joga kitlida dot Muscogee idalwa nakjoga mahaga sahel wijad ojis. Learning at the College of the Muscogee Nation. Joga kitlida dot muskogi idalwa nakjoga mahaga sahalwija o. He does a flea, you know, so like athlete. And sometimes people just say kitlida. So that's why I wanted to show you. And since this is public, wanted you guys, you got to remember about copyright and everything. But this is, yeah, we work with them all the time. And if you have any questions, you know, about any kind of pronunciation, there's, there's like the different ways to spell, different ways to say things. Um, like Inga, E N K A. I've seen it spelled E N K B, Inga, or Inga. Inga, Inga. Neither one of them is wrong. And I've had people come and tell me I'm wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I speak this way. <laughs> All right. And uh, I wanted to show you the Scope uh, uh, and Language Program is working. And I want to say it's going to be done within the, for the end of the month on the master website. So it should have all of the things that you were looking for, the Google Drives, um, other stuff that other one might have put out there, some stories, some uh, animals, numbers, should have everything out there. It's almost done. I know, I think next week we're gonna, it's going to be presented to, to uh, to some of the higher ups, and then you gotta get to go ahead probably at the end of the month. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is one of the things that is on our new uh, YouTube. Oh, I forget sometimes some um, permissions to do YouTube are not always here. Yeah. Okay. But this is um, what they have done is, you know how we have our, our ham songs? They have put those to, to um, videos. So the words and the songs and the singing are right there. So that's there. Whenever you get home, you guys can look on the link. And this is the one we just named. It's direct on the link to what we just saying. So you have that. And I don't I'm going to see this one. Okay, so YouTube is not going to be uh, available today. It just depends on the permissions on the computer that I'm using. For my computer, it'll open it up. But these are there for you guys to take a look at and view everything. Okay. 
I was playing with this look. I was trying to make sure everything is in the order that it needs to be. There's 18, so it's some of it's in order. Sometimes when we do these things, um, it takes a while for things to all catch up. And this is just a disclaimer. I have showed this before, but some of you have to see people is there's different ways to say the same thing. There's different spellings to say the same thing. And we're, we had to choose the way that we're gonna um, present it to you guys, but that doesn't mean it's the only way. All right, so I know some people get offended. I've had people get, get a little upset. I'm like, you know, you speak however your family speaks, however your region speaks. You know, um, just know that everybody speaks differently. And if I can understand you and you can understand me, we're doing good. <clears throat> Just like um, Owa and Miwa. We was a new one for water that I've never heard of before until just recently. I've always just heard Owa. Right? I'm told that Wewa was Seminole. Really? Okay. So, uh, Wewa, I heard from uh, one of our Mahayas that originally it was Owa Miwa. Or we were Owa, it's one of those. Owa we were or we were Owa. I think it was we were Owa. So just like soda pop. <laughs> some of us say soda, some of us say pop. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just you know what you what you say. You know, up uh, north they say soda. Closer to the south, we say a lot of us say pop. And you very seldom even hear somebody say soda pop. <laughs> but it's all the same, like owa we were, you know, both water. Some people chose Tiwa, some people chose Owa. But you know, I heard that the whole thing was was originally what it was how it looked at. It's a K is Yeah, his J is uh is what I just want his J. I know Sipinol say his J for the same word. And there's also one. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. Like, you good? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, these are all ways to say, you know, hello, how are you doing, you know, that kind of thing. It's not wrong. It's just, I hear people buzzing, and I'm like, excuse me, creep tag. Uh -huh. Creep tag, but it's so much time, H-E-N. Somebody said that, and I was like, you know, somebody commented, and I was like, you know, that's one way to, one way to spell it and say it. You have those people who are just adamant. This is the only way. But, you know, if you look at life, is there only one way to do something? No. So, <laughs> all right. And I have shared with you guys this before. If anybody wants to, after class, you can come up here and just take a picture of it and share it. These are some of the things that are out of the Scoji uh, language program. Remember the memorize? How many of you guys play that? I know um, some of you guys play this, and it's it's an interactive uh, game. It helps people remember. There's the new Muskogee Language Facebook, the Muskogee Language Instagram, and then Linktree. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I know I think it has everything on there, All right? And then Muskogee Language Google Drive. Right, so all of these are out there. And let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So, how many of you guys have been with us when we've, we've gone over this one? So, can you guys go ahead and say it, and then you guys say it. Ah. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So I will. I will. Um, Ken, I will forward your stuff to the Muskogee Language Program, and we'll try to get all that sent out to you. All right. Whatever. Okay. So there's our alphabet. Like I said, it's always nice to go back. But sometimes we've got to go back to go forward again. And you hear Mahaya Barnett talk about the sounds of Muscogee language. She doesn't like to call it alphabet, and we're all familiar with alphabet. So that's why I put alphabet. But she, you hear her talking about Muscogee sounds. Spell something with Muscogee sounds. So the uh, right here. So mom, to spell that out in the Muscogee sound, would be me, ah, me, it, me, e, me, a. Me, 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 uh, all right. So, and then again, when you put them together, sometimes their sounds change. Yeah, but one thing about Muscogee is everything is represented, even if it's not the complete sound like H. I know H is really good for this. Instead of he, you got a, but you can still hear it. So um, everybody's represented. There's no silent letters. And uh, so it's just basically what you see is what you got. <laughs> All right. So just like this, like the G A T H T B G A G O T B G A. Remember, please, when you put them all together, you've already spoken these. So go through and practice these. If you want to lose the sound, you've already spoken these. So together, they say cha, j, 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 Say all of this. 
Mahaya Barnett, and I will put it on as a PowerPoint. I know I did originally have the uh, Facebook. Um, one of the elders was speaking it, but like I said, some of those some of those um, files got lost. So I'm going to re reaccomplish it so we can have it out there. So anytime you've got the two letter, now you've got the three letter. Again, it's the same rhythm, the same sounds. You've got the A, uh, the A, the E, the A, O, the U, and the U, uh, right there in the middle of the rest of the, uh, the uh, letters. So let's go ahead and stop. Say, 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 stop. So this is going through your your rounds right there. A, um, A, E, A, O, U, and it's just putting them with the letters. All right. Does anybody have any questions before we go any further? So we're just going back to go forward. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So week one, we learned the you know, simple things, present tense, and how to how to conjugate that. Does everybody remember that? I know uh, sometimes it's been such a while ago that you kind of forget. So that's why I'm going over this. Remember, these are the rules for our simple sentence present tense, and I put it all made it a little pretty <laughs> because I think a lot of native people are visual. So you'll look at this and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. Simple sentence present tense conjugation steps. We draw for ETV, you get the verb stem, the upgrade of the verb stem, the length of the final vowel of the verb stem, the final vowel is a B, change it to an A, unless it's followed by MK, MK or T. If it is, leave it a B. The rest of the vowel get a long mark. Remember, L means to lengthen, so you lengthen the final vowel. And again, remember, this is kind of Dry, <laughs> but when we start doing the steps, it'll make sense. Just, just hang in with me. No snoring. <laughs> L grade shows the tent, M B M through L grade turns it to M A M to follow all these steps. The final vowel, the last vowel in the verb stem would be M P M. The final vowel can also be the only vowel in the verb stem. The V becomes an A unless it's followed by M K M K or T. All the others will be listened by letting the law mark open. And these are the vowels along A, I, O, E. Right. Third person as a person marker, which is I, it's for nothing. Right. And so through our whole journey here, it's either been I or a uh, or I. It's just always been second person, and nothing has always been third person. Right. Person marker shows who's doing the action. I, the first person means I, is the second person means you, the third person does not have a marker, remember? I had originally used this symbol, but I, now I use the open and close parentheses because in there is she, he, it, or they. All right, no person marker means it's the third person. Third person translates to English would be she, she, they, and it. All right, and they're all singular. See, it says, if you're using they, it's singular. As a step, S or ES, which is declared with endings, means the period or am arcus. That's a lot. <laughs> but like I said, I was able to break it down um, to show how how it gets easier and how you um you kind of find me. All right, so everybody remember home it up. And after we conjugate it, we can move it up like this. Remember, so you know that the verb stem right here is it means eating. You've got your I right here and am. Eating I am. Uh, translation. Literal translation is eating I am. English translation is I am eating. And uh, like I said, now since we've learned how to conjugate. We know what each part of this sentence means. And I'll try to. All right. So, okay, this is negation. It didn't, it didn't put in order how I normally have it. Um, sometimes Google takes a couple of days or sometimes hours to put it in the 
put any changes in there and, and leave it like that. So, well, let's just go ahead and go. Does anybody want to try to spell down this one? Egypt. And remember, since we learned how to conjugate it, that was really scary. But if you remember how we conjugate it, is the verb stem in seeing it is you is is are he just did okay let's go you word the literal translation to english is seeing you are and then you i like to say everybody turn it backwards <laughs> you are seeing one of the things that i would like to say is you know our language the scope language predates the country so how can I be backwards? Yeah. All right. So then I can just turn it back to the All right. Okay. Mohanis. Mohanis. So now, what does a mean? Mm -hmm. Hey, remember, we learned what we're going to do. Well, that should be eating, not eating. <laughs> I heard to eat. Well, to eat, this should be eating. And then up uh -huh, line, he means going to. Remember that third person, so it can be she, he, it, or they. And is, means am, or it. So, um, uh -huh, yes. that is the final discrepancy sentence. The literal translation is eating. She is eating, he is eating, it is eating, they are. English translation again, the same thing. She, she is eating, he is eating, it is eating, or they are eating. That's why you have the parenthesis. It's, it's a placeholder for all of those things that you could be saying. And again, situational environment, if you're talking about a woman, you're more than likely talking about she, you know, if you're talking about uh, a, uh, uh, your son, more than likely you're talking about a he. And one of the things that we we're talking about is you don't want to call somebody it. <laughs> I'm usually thinking about, you know, I'm talking about a tree, a dog, an animal, it is eating or it is drinking. And they, you can be talking about, oh, they, they're over there, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Anybody have any questions so far? I know this is all over the place. This is uh, this is not in the order that I had to put it. In the present tense negation, second person, remember, this is the L rating you can. This is the one I was trying to show you guys. It's how we get from um, from from one place to the other, like Malaysia, Malaysia is to sleep or cook to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these, this is where all of our rules come into play. So rules for perfect negation, second person, no L grading. You drop your ETV and you uh, add your person marker I, I, which is represented by B in present tense, it or nothing. Add your negation full or equal. Add your subject marker T. Add your auxiliary for false, which means yeah, mark is. Don't add it up to cook. You drop your ETV, and this is your verb stem. And the next step is you add your person marker. Since we're going to be talking about you, we add it. As your negation is EKO or KO. The reason why we add EKO is my tummy more. There's right. Okay. So right here, it ends in a consonant, not a vowel. So if there's a vowel, you don't add a vowel. If there's no vowel, that's when you add a vowel, e -O. So that's your negation. You're not doing something. And then your second <laughs> part of T, and then auxiliary, auxiliary verb, OS, which means am, are, is. They did skip for OS. They did skip for OS. Cooking, you not are, you are not cooking. So the uh, right here it says person marker it's negation eco or go your subject marker and your zoom. So that's how we get from one place to the other. 
I know um, for those of you who are online, you might just be starting out. It, it takes a little bit to, to start sinking in, but just keep listening and keep keep attending it. It'll start sinking in. Okay. You can see that I'm playing as a, as a way of things look. I know you haven't seen this book before, but these are our old rules for the present information. No out, upgrade, drop an ETB to make the first, and measure person marker, B with I, it's is new. No person marker, I go right there with the parentheses, she, he, it, or they, no person marker. Add your negation of it, go or ego, and your subject marker T, and your deliver and or goals, which is and markets. And so the reason I put this, like I said, to uh, I change it up because when I print these out, I want them to um, to stand out as oh, this this picture goes with this. How we conjugated that. But I know in the beginning I didn't know how to um, do candle, <laughs> but now I'm uh, learning it and think I'm on a roll. So again, this is uh, let me say this very much. I'm talking all that day. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Aquapanada, step by step on the rules that we were talking about. Aquapanada is just not to sleep. <laughs> she is playing. Uh, so right here, Aquapanada is to play. You drop your ETV, you get your verb stamp. No L rating, which we only L rated in the first module. Okay. Add your person marker of, uh, which means I. So that little addition means I. You add your pull. What does pull is? What does pull mean? No. For negation? Yes. All right. And then your T, subject marker, pulls. Choose a regular verb and mark is. I'm going to pull pulls. So your verb stamp. Person marker, your negation, your subject marker T, and your auxiliary verb post is your am markets. I am not playing. All right. Anybody want to try that? Go ahead. Anybody? Exactly. Good job. Good job. And like I said, if this one scares you, just remember how we conjugated it. Just do it in a little step. It was good that you knew that that wasn't to sleep. I was like, hey, that's not to sleep. <laughs> like I said, when I go through these, I, you know, before we print them out, I want to make sure everything is right. So I, I've been going through and, and editing everything. So whenever we actually finish printing things out and then are able to hand out module one, two, three, four. It'll all be right. <laughs> and and it takes a little time to go through and, and um, fix everything that we've already done. Remember, same steps and we are um, Drop the verb stamp. I mean, drop the ETB and get the verb stamp. And uh, remember, what does upon mean? Going to. So we're going to do something. Going to future tense. So add your upon. And then your it. It means <laughs> second person to you. Yes. All right. And I, you can see that this is an updated version because if the letter is not a vowel, we add the vowel EKO. That's why I put on there. So would this be a EKO or a KO? EKO. Okay. And how do you know that it's going to be EKO? There's no vowel. There's no vowel. Right. So it ends in a K, so that's not a vowel. We add the EKO, not the K. Okay. And then you add your T, you add your pulse. Okay, anybody want to try this one? I do not need to use a pulse. And like I said, we've already done the steps. I am honey for books. I am honey for books. So that makes it easier for you to understand and to pronounce. Again, the color code so we know what everything is the verb stem. We add the tense marker. A han means 
going to add your it to person marker um, right here. So we're now we're talking about second person. And then full or equal negation. Your T is the subject marker. And your goals and R is. I am on equal roles. You are not going to make. So, like I said, if that looks really scary, just remember to sound it out the way that you learn to conjugate it. And then, of course, when we start making bigger sentences, you can put uh, not lady, I am on equal roles. You are not going to make bread. Just die. I am on equal roles. You are not going to make eggs. So that's how we start making the longer sentence. Goodness, right? If anything scary comes on here, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> sometimes when you're in, in Google Drive and then sometimes we're in your, your YouTube, and some of these things come up and you're like, don't look at this, you know, you're in the middle of teaching. <laughs> because um, I think one of them was a scary movie, and I'm not into scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So since we've got a little time here, does anybody have any questions? So we remember. What we did on uh, on module one, two, and three, and four, you can see I updated it because before it just had the uh, parentheses she, he, it, or they. So module one, we learned present tense. Humbada is the infinitive verb to eat. And then right here you have the I means I, it is you, and then parentheses is she, he, it, or they. Humbis. Humbis. Eating, I am, I am eating. Module two, we went over present tense negation, even up to eat. The, the of is I, it is still you. She, he, it, she, he, it, or they are third person. Anybody want to try this one? Can you read it? <laughs> yes. Eating, I am not am, I am not eating. I know I didn't print it out for you guys. I can't stretch it out. If I, if I touch it, I know it'll go to something. You printed it out the last. Right. Oh, yeah. I did print it out. All right. So Monica four. Put your mind hands. Keep it up to eat. I is I. It's is you. She it or they. Anybody want to try this one? What I promise. What kind of is? Going to if I can, I am going to eat. So that everything that we've covered so far, we've come, come from the alphabet, the sounds, putting two sounds together, and then I showed you how to practice your sounds, and then you can put two sounds together like um, pujo, f u c o pujo, that because you did you know b b and all of the sounds. So good job, good job. You can start playing with these two letters and making words and look at the dictionary. Just like I said, these are ways to, to challenge yourself. I'm not going to say you got homework because nobody will tell you. <laughs> you got homework. <laughs> but now just challenge yourself. Write some um, sentences, even if it's just simple sentences. And if you're, you know, um, next week, I'll ask if anybody has any. From everything we've covered and we can share. You know, that's just a way to push yourself and to give you a chance to share what you've learned and, um, you know, help me to remember it too. All right, does anybody have any questions? All right, I think we, we're doing pretty good, and I think, I think everybody is, I think everybody's got everything. You guys are doing so well. You answer the questions, and you know when something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's some more, like I said, these are just um, things that I have put in there. <clears throat> Again, I want to remind you that you guys have a, a little pass to words of the day. Like I said, these are things I love to do, and I don't remember. Did I show you guys August? Oh, I did. I showed you the food. But these are all out there, and uh, some of the words of the day we have already covered. But it will have the, the sounds that you're looking for, like um, maybe it's
Because when we're talking about kitchen, yeah, here it is, the recipes, these are out there. Great dumpling, how to uh, do some things. Does everybody remember these? <laughs> we had to start uh, putting the words of the day, the, what we're doing at the beginning. You guys can read it before it, <laughs> before it disappears. So, you know, you got that. You got the link, the Google Drive, picture of these. And when we're talking about um, some of the, when we're talking about our food, when we're talking about things like this. Siskida humkin. One cup. Siskida humkin. Because I was asking the the, uh, the speakers, I'm like, how do you say one cup? You say one cup. <laughs> you know? I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> but then there's there's other words for you know half a cup. And um, one of the things that Mahai Bar and I was talking about is anybody see the old uh, recipes where they say get a pinch of salt? Well, we don't have a pinch because she, she said, well, you got a pinch, pinch somebody, but not like a pinch of salt. She goes, just a little bit of salt. And I started laughing, and, and I, said, I said, well, I guess a little, little bit of salt would be a pinch. But I, normally, when you're cooking something, and I, I know I do this, and you see that the, uh, the uh, chefs do this, taste it. So you know if you need two pinches of salt, or just a little bit more. But some of these things that we're talking about, there's no Muscogee word for it. And our the language is really descriptive. So just a little bit, just a little bit more. <laughs> So these are out there. If you um you want to jump in there and look at at uh, some of the words that we have for um, like right here, our kitchen words. Jado hey ya. I know you can hear that. You can hear that um southern sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that house maybe. Jado hey ya. Jado um. I know, Jado, I think, um, yeah, it's raw. And then, um, Heya is more like hot, so hot, raw. But if you think about, you know, the old days when they cooked on something, it was over the fire, or hot, raw, hot, raw. So these are some of the things that our, our ancestors had cooked with. We had to make it work with modern things because, you know, you're still cooking on them. But these are out there if you uh, you're thinking about something you don't know how to say it. It might be out here. Sidifki. So we were talking about, you know, how um, you're melting butter into something. She goes, well, there's really she oh, or you're you're putting something into those mats. There wasn't a word for what we were looking for. I forgot what it is. Dissolve. We were looking for dissolve. That's why I got a picture of dissolve. She goes, well, there's really not a picture of this, you know, a word for dissolve, so we had to use maps. No word for dissolve. So, city, 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 city. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're going to end a little bit early. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, Kim, online, I will have, uh, I will get uh, the Muscogee language program to send you some of the things that I was talking about. Let me um, get my phone. I will say thank you to God, please. I will see you all again. And thank you online. And I will see you um, let's see Monday. No, we just kind of have a class on Monday. Um, no, I don't think so.
kind of time. <laughs> but I will see you Tuesday and Friday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday. See, I'm in class Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I will try to sit with my opponent. But I will see you guys Wednesday and Friday. Hello.